Good afternoon, everyone. This is Swan. Hope you had a great Monday so far. All right. Bear with me just for a second. This is the first time I have done this class. Uh, so if you've attended this class before, it probably probably will be nothing like the way Teresa does it. <laughs> um, I have a different method of teaching. Can you guys see and hear me okay? Yes, Sam, thank you. Good, so you guys should see the uh, black box screen on uh, on your screen, correct? Good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let me silence my cell phone so we don't get that noise. Okay. Sam, I like, the, I like your way of teaching. That's why I'm taking it again. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, I come from a corporate training background, still do quite a bit of it. Uh, so I do have a different type style of teaching than some other instructors, but it's all good. Everybody has their own little style, so we will get going. If you are new to Black Box, welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your late afternoon and evening, no doubt. Check your local time zone. Um, we will do this will take probably an hour, I would say, uh, between 5 and 6 p.m., depending on how many questions we get. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to drill down through this platform. And if you are not a Black Box member and you're joining, welcome. We kind of put this out on the social medias to, this afternoon to see if anybody would like to come hang out with us and get a, view, a feel for the platform, how it works, how it operates, what it can do for you in your trading. So uh rati you're here awesome thanks for joining so what we're going to do is go through this if you guys have a question put it in the chat which is also in the the uh go to webinar user interface okay um don't put it in discord or don't put it in uh over here under chat but if you could you utilize the go to webinar question or chat box and we'll get you answered there um, as they come in, I'll take a look at them. Um, right now, we don't have anything, no questions, but as they come in, we'll take a look at them, we'll pause, answer some questions, and we'll go back to going through the uh, platform. Okay? If there's something particular that you want to make sure you learn today, that you attended tonight, because you're like, I want to learn this, type that in right now. All right? Go ahead and put that in, send it to me, and I will do my best to make sure you get what you came for tonight, okay? Very good, well, let's move in. Um, again, my name is Swan. I am one of the team traders and one of the educators with Black Box Stocks. I do the morning webinars mainly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. We do live uh, screen sharing and live trading, talking through charts, talking through option flow. We do that every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, then I do a fill in as needed. So like tonight, helping out Teresa, uh, she usually does this class. So that's where why you have me instead. And I apologize for that. Um, I to give you a little bit of background of myself. I've been a trader with Black Box for about three to four years, three and a half years, I think. And um, started off as a member, liked what I saw, liked the community, liked the education, liked the product love the platform so uh, utilized it in my everyday trading and here we are fast forward now i am working with them and one of their educators so excellent platform can't trade without it um, use it every day all day that i'm at, at the uh, trade station so let us get started here we got some people putting in here what they want to learn and i love that thank you so much and i will make sure we get to those things uh, to the best of my ability. If I have the answer, I will get it to you. If I don't, I will tell you I don't know, and I'll get you the answer. So, all right, let's get started, shall we? So we always start off by saying this system, when you first sign in, has two different sides to the platform. There is the stock side, which is what we are on currently, 
the main landing page and that is found by basically clicking here if we click on here it's just going to refresh and we get the same page the other side is the options page when you flip back and forth between these two you can see these boxes change to different things so let's talk about what it looks like on the stock side on the stock side we have the volatility indicator here in the middle top middle that is our visual representation of level two so if you ever have watched level two over on your broker um, you'll notice that it can be a little mind numbing this is taking into consideration all of those orders all of the bids all of the asks and putting it into a nice visual representation of a meter if that meter is going to the green we will see that there is buying pressure if that meter is heading to the red we would see that there would be some selling pressure so it's a quick overview of what's going on with level two on that ticker okay if i want to see a different ticker i come down here to the load symbol and i type in another ticker and it shows me the same thing okay we'll get into the charts here in a second so you might be seeing some things on your chart that you are not seeing and we'll go over in detail the charting system and how it operates uh, but right now we're just talking about this low volatility indicator okay real-time news this is a continuous feed of news as it comes in live through different providers the fly news is one of them it, um, it just continually feeds through there is also a news tab over here on the bottom right and we will go over these buttons in detail as well so i'm not going to jump over there but just know that we'll go over these and we'll get eventually get to the news tab the alert log the alert log when you first sign in that is not green it's gray what this does is it turns on a pop-up box so if we would get an alert during the day during market hours uh, this will alert and get a box that pops up that says the stock alerted or this option alerted based on whichever uh, alert the system has picked up okay so that gives you that little box there gives you the pop-ups then you can also turn on an audible alert to where you not only get the pop-up, but you also get a little ding every time we get an alert. So if you're not always on the screen, it's a good sometimes to have that turned on so that you can hear the audible tone, come over here, check out, see what alerted, and then go to the uh, chart. Just know that alerts do not mean they're not buy or sell signals. They are, hey, look at this. The algorithms in our system have picked up something that's unusual. And it's just grabbing your attention and saying, hey, come look at this chart. Come look at this ticker. That's the purpose of these alerts that pop up. So in the alert side of the, of the stock, so here we are on the stock side. These are the alerts. These are all stock alerts. And what do all these different colors mean? Well, here's what I want you to do right now. If you have your system turned on, go over to education. Click on stock guide. And that is going to download or pull up and available to download, click on this little guy up here to download it. And it'll give you a nice description of each of those alerts and what they mean. So the blue ones, the purple, the whites, the light blue, the red, the orange, and the pink, and then the gold as well. So again, you can see there's a lot of different colors. The white ones are basically your orders that come in just during the, or the your alerts that come in basically just during the market hours. The pink, and the yellow are option alerts <clears throat> like amd and apple those were tied to some options uh, red is a rapid decline alert those are alerted in the pre-market uh, as possible shorts for the day if you are not seeing the red alerts you have to turn that feature on one time so if you're a new user and you want to see what those rapid declines look you come up here to the top right where you have either your profile picture or the initials of your uh, name click on that go to settings and this box pops up and you want to make sure advanced user is checked if advanced user is not checked check it hit save and then this will say it's updated it'll go away then you should see these red alerts in the mornings those only alert pre-market okay so again Go up to education, click on stock guide, download that document, and then read through that document. And it'll give you some nice details of what those 
different alerts mean and why they trigger. Okay, go back to the platform. Over on this side, we have our top 10 gainers for the day. So this is uh, BLU alerted at 570, went up as high as $9.84. If I click on BLU, you can see it alerted this morning in the pre-market at 570, nice climb pre-market, uh, held right here at market open, which is great to see, and then continued to pop up to over $9, uh, the high of 984. So some nice gainers on BLU. This goes through the top gainers for the day based off of percentage of gain. And then you can also look at the top decliners. Uh, these would be based off of the red alerts. So NSM and TM and SLDP were the three that we had the early this morning. Here they are. So 525 down to 421. So it's a 16% drop in that stock if you shorted it. Uh, TM was 177 down to 175. So not even a 1% drop on that one. Okay. So not too good on the decliners. If you want to look at yesterday's, or in this case, it would be Friday's, you can see the top gainers off the alerts and then top decliners. MRNA was a big one because of the news that popped. Um, so it dropped on Friday close to 11%. So that's how we use the red alerts as possible shorts through the day that the system brings up. All right. Now we'll move over to this box right here. This guy right here, you, let's see, Ray, let me go to the questions box. We're getting quite a few of them. So let me take a pause here and get through some questions. Um, Ray, only see top gainers and yesterday's top 10 gainers. Okay, that means you need to turn on, if you're not seeing decliners, that means you need to turn on these red alerts. So go up here to your name, top right, that little picture. Go to settings, check that box that says advanced user, hit save, and then you may have to do a refresh of your system, and then you'll see those decliner alerts. Yeah, do a refresh. Once that's set, you may have to do a little refresh on the, uh, like go out and come back in, see if that takes care of it. Okay. Uh, Dennis, you, we do not do OTC any longer. No, we do not. We did it one time. It was very expensive uh, per per user because we have to pay for those exchange fees. And only we did a survey and there was so few people using it that it didn't make sense for us to carry those fees any longer. So uh, we didn't we we did away with the OTC side of the platform. All right, uh, Jiam, thanks for organizing this. I'd like to learn basics of option flow and dark pool. Okay, we can get into that. Ray wants to learn how to make money day trading using stocks and options using black box. Awesome, that's exactly what we all want you to do. Um, Rati, I see you, I got you. We'll see if we have time for that. What are different levels? What does each level represent? Will there be a replay of this educational webinar? Yes, Hamid, I am recording it as we speak. So there will be a recording for you to watch. And at the same time, uh, this class is done every Monday at 5 p.m. So if you can't make it, you know, if you wanna be able to come back and do it again, you can come back next Monday and do it again with uh, Teresa. Okay. Uh, Hamid, I'm a little confused on your question. What are different levels? What does each level represent? If you could give me some clarification on that. All right. Oh, level one, level two. Okay. So that is different that's on the broker side of things so it's orders that are on the books so if people put in limit orders um that's what that's what creates your bid and ask so you can see how many orders are sitting out there that's what your level one level two is the volatility indicator takes into consideration level two 
So you can kind of see if there's buying pressure or selling pressure based on the way the needle points. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right, a lot of questions about the Swan Lottos and Swan Watch List. Okay, uh, Burhan, yes, I will get to how we how you get those option trade alerts and where you can find them. Okay, all right, I think we got everything caught up pretty much that we've gone over so far. There's some additional ones in here, but we'll get to them over the next 45 minutes or so. Let me finish through the this side of the platform and then we'll flip over to the option side. So we covered everything on this side of the screen, with the exception of the chart and these buttons down here. So let's go over these buttons. Let's first talk about the alert stream. That's the first one. If you ever wonder what these are, just hover over them, gives you what the descriptions are. So let's talk about alert stream. The alert stream is a, uh, when you first get into the alert stream, you're gonna see it set up like this, okay? It's gonna show um, all this information, all kind of jumbled up with 52 week highs, blocks, dark pools, um, early in the mornings, it shows you a bunch of garbled, you know, stuff about the system booting up. So in the mornings, first thing I do is click on filter, uncheck all, and I click on my 52-week high because I want to see what tickers are hitting 52-week highs. And throughout the day today, it's a good thing to kind of run through at the end of the day too, see what was hitting 52-week highs towards the end of the day. And nothing too uh, eye-grabbing, to be honest, that's, that I see there. But you can filter this alert stream to a lot of different things. If you want to see stock halts, you can. That way you can see anything that's halted. If something has a stock price spike, you can click that and you'll get a notified that that happens. Um, if you want to see all the dark pool levels, which is what I tend to like to watch, dark pool levels, I click that and hit set filters. And then I see the dark pool levels that have come in. So let's talk about a firm. So a firm today got some nice option flow, AFRM. And after hours, got a huge $300 million dark pool print at 109.96. You can see it there. Now, if you want to see that line, if your chart is not showing that orange bar right there, it's because you have to add dark pool as a study. So let's talk about charting for a second. Okay, I'm going to make this bigger. And just by doing that, guys, just so you know, you can make your chart bigger by hitting that those four arrows, hit that, it brings your chart to three-fourths of your screen. All right, so let's go up here to studies. And initially, this is the way it's set, okay? Only thing that comes up is volume. So I click on studies. This is what your all of your charts look like currently, unless you've added some studies. But let's, let's add some studies. So let's first add VWAP. So volume weighted, let's go down. VWAP right here, add it, there it is. Now it's shown in red. I don't want it in red. Let's say I want it in purple. So I go to studies, go back to the top where I was, and there it is, click on it, VWAP. Now I can go in and change the color, okay? Let's say I want it as uh, orange. If Do I wanna add an upper VWAP and a lower one? You can add those in too if you'd like. There's the upper bands and lower bands. Here's your next levels. So you can add some pivot points, basically is what you're adding in here by displaying these different levels of VWAP. And you can even go to a third level, okay? Um, to me, it gets a little busy. So I only look at one line. I look at the VWAP line. And this is where you would save and make any changes to the colors, things like that, okay? So we'll go back, hit that done. Now let's say we want to add a moving average. So I come down here to the M's for moving average right there. It says, what moving average do you want to add? So let's add the 34, which is a good one. And uh, close is good. You wanna keep the field as is. And then the type is where you want to do, S would be SMA, E would be an EMA, EMA. Okay, so let's just say I wanna do an EMA. So I click EMA, exponential. Leave the offset at zero. We've got the 34 in here and I'm gonna hit done. So now we've got the 34 EMA 
uh, drawn in here on the chart. Okay, let's say I want to change that color to purple though. Then here I should have changed it to purple. Hit done. Now we have the 34 EMA. Now we can add another EMA. So we'll go back to moving averages. And I'm just using this as an example. You guys can add whatever moving averages you want. Um, let's do the 89. <clears throat> Exponential. We're going to make this one orange. Done. Now we have the 89 drawn in. All right. So that's how you add the EMAs. Now, so now we have two EMAs and we have VWAP. Let's say we also like to have dark pool. So now we go to studies. The very first one was dark pool. So we add dark pool in. Now we see this big orange bar appears on our chart. See that? Now, if I get too zoomed in, you may, you'll get this, not enough dark pool data to render the dark pool volume profile. This only shows you dark pool for the time frame your chart is showing. So this came in at 426, would be 1626 military time, and we're beyond, we're, I'm zoomed in too far. So as soon as I zoom back out, there it populates in. Okay. If I want to see more, I can go to a five day, see if there's anything additional that's come in. There's not. As I zoom out, other dark pool levels start appearing. So dark pool only shows in the chart time frame that you're looking at. Let's say now this is the way we want our charts, okay? Well, let's say first of all, view, you want to, or I'm sorry, display. Let's say you wanted to use uh, Heikinashi candles instead of what's we got here. So then you click on uh, baseline delta is what it's set at. Let's click on Heikinashi. Now we've got Heikinashi candles. We've got our 34, our 89, we've got VWAP and we have dark pool. Now I want to save this setting. So tomorrow when morning, when I come in, I don't want to have to do all this again. So you go up to view and hit save view. Well, what do you want to call it? We're going to call this one BBS orientation. Save. Now I've done these classes before in the mornings where I have other views saved up here, webinar view. So you can have them set up different way. You could call this one 3489 VWAP dark pool, you know, however you want to name it. And you may have another one that's called, you know, uh, I don't know, anchored VWAP Bollinger Bands, and that way you can go flip back and forth. So if I want to see what these other ones were, I just go to webinar view. There it changes it. Looks like the only thing I have in here is uh, the 34, the 89, and dark pool. Uh, one of my other ones was this one. So I changed the color of the volume, added a few things. So that's how you save them. You can continue to save multiple views, um, and then you can come back and grab which one you want every morning. Okay. All right, few questions. Jiam, how can the dark pool come in at 426 after close for a firm? Can it be that it's reported late? No, it's not reported. I mean, they're supposed to report it immediately. Sometimes they don't report it immediately. But um, these are shares most of the time, so they can continue to trade them post-market and pre-market. So 109.96, that could have I mean that that tells me that came in either right at close or shortly after close because we're we're trading right here in that same zone. So you know it could be that it was delayed, but if it was, not by much. Um, once in a while we will see ones that come in that are delayed. They're not delayed in the way in the means that we delay the data to you. They're delayed in that they're they that they are late in reporting it to the exchange, and then the exchange reports it to us. And then we report it. To, you know, as soon as the exchange sees it, we see it, and as soon as we see it, you see it. It all happens within fractions of a second. Okay. Good, so that's kind of the chart review. 
Now we're going to go back over here to this. So we just talked about uh, the, the alert stream and the filter tab. Um, one, while we're on the filter tab of the alert, let's do this. You remember if I went to five day and zoomed out, uh, maybe it was, let's go to the 15 minute. Yeah, so we'll go to 15 minute and now we have these other dark pool levels that are showing up, right? If I want to see what these actual levels are, I, I can do that over here in the alert stream by clicking the filter button. So currently I'm only seeing live dark pool that comes in for today. If I want to see historical on the filter, I have to click on history. So I have my dark pool checked, I have history checked. Now I'm going to go in and pick the, the date and the time or the day of the week uh, where I want this span of historical data. So because this goes, my chart goes back all the way to December 1st, I'm just going to pick December 1st as my start point, today as my end point hit set filter, and then you'll see these dark pool levels will populate over here on the right. So there's one here, and it's below 109, so that tells me that it's probably this 107.24 right here. Okay, this one was today, the top one, and then these others are the 116, 126s, that's gonna be these guys up here, 116, and 127 way up here okay follow me so this 126.88 is that one this one here is down there the 116.57 is right there then today's is this one right there so that's how you can see what levels are on the historical side of dark pool. And then to get back to regular dark pool, uh, you just have to go back to filter, uncheck history, and then it just gets you back to today's only. Vanita, what do we judge from looking at dark pool data? So dark pool data we look at as levels of price levels of interest. So a large amount of shares were either bought or sold. We don't know which. It's in the dark pool. So we talked about that level two earlier, where we can see the bids, we can see the asks, we can see the quantities. That is called the lit market because it's lit up, we can see it. Um, it's there for all to see. The dark pool is done on a private exchange. We can't see it. So all we know is after the transaction is done, it shows up on the tape. We don't know if it was a buy or sell. The only person that knows if that was a buy or sell is the one that did it. So we have to re we have, we look at it as a level of interest and a le potential level of support or resistance based on price action. So tomorrow, if you don't have this line on your chart for a firm at 109.96, I would add it because tomorrow it's going to be interesting to see how price reacts around that price. Okay. If it continues to go up, then we would assume that that was a, a buy. Um, if it and if it fails miserably, then we may consider that being a sell. We don't know, but we have to watch price action. That's why we look at dark pool. Let's potential levels of support and resistance. Nice example today, Tesla. Okay. Look at Tesla today. Look at this two o'clock between one one forty and two forty. Look over here. Um, right there, that two twelve. There was a hundred twelve million dollar block at nine fifty four forty, and there was an eighty one million. That's so almost two hundred million dollars in that nine fifty four range. Look how price reacted as soon as those dark pools came in. Used it as a support line and climbed, uh, what, 65, eventually $20 off of that dark pool line. So 60, 50, yeah, 54 up to 75, 20 bucks in an hour and a half. So that, when we see live dark pool come in means they bought those live it wasn't, those were not delayed. We were trading at that price when they came in. 
those are always of interest to us because it's like, okay, is someone coming in and now we're trying to find some a bottom here and will it use it as support? In this case with Tesla, it sure did. So that's why we look at it. Okay, let's move on to these other buttons. Pre-market scan, this shows us the top 30 up, top 30 down in the pre-market only, basing it off of the uh, previous day's low. Excuse me, I misspoke, After, over the previous day's close, not the low, previous day's close, if it's up or down pre-market. So for you uh, pre-market traders, this is a good place to take a look, top 30 up, top 30 down. Post-market scan, this is one of my favorites and I actually get to show it because we're after hours now. It'd be nice if we had some uh, ERs reporting or something that really showed a move, but why I love this, same thing, it shows you the top 30 up, top 30 down percentage-wise over the close today. But why I love it is volume starts at zero. All right, so MIND has traded 5 million shares in the after hours only so in the last hour and a half okay so it's on a 53 percent move in five five million shares in just the last hour and a half on the downside seac is down 10 percent on 23 million shares traded only after hours so for after hours traders this is big because again if i see something up 20 percent and it's only on 500 shares that means nothing to me but if it's down 10% on 5 million shares or 23 million shares, that's obviously got some interest. So that's why I love the post-market scans. You can see what's moving after hours and if there's real conviction behind the move. Market scan shows you the top 40 up, top 40 down of the day. Okay. Again, this is just based off of the uh, percentage of increase or decrease for the day. Volume ratio takes into consideration the average 10-day volume. So um, NES traded 91 million shares today, which was over 4,000 times its normal average 10-day volume. So obviously a lot of interest there. SCAC, same thing, 75 million shares, 90 times its average 10-day. So again, it gives you an idea whether there's true conviction behind the move that it's making. This, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't trade off this solely, but this is definitely something to look at. Of, to note. Um, if you see a ticker on here that you trade and you're like, oh, is there real interest in that? Oh yeah, look at that. It's trading you know, 50 times its average 10-day volume. There's a reason why. So what's the reason why? Let's click on SEAC. <clears throat> why did this thing move at three o'clock? It went up over 100%. Well, that brings us to the next tab, the news tab. And there's nothing showing here, which is always a little scary. So no news on SEAC, but yet there was this big move up. Um, not sure why, but let's go back to this one. Let's click on NES, see if there's news on NES today. Oh, you know what, I may have, that's what I did. I had my stuff filtered correctly. So let's go back to SEAC, hit news, there we go. Uh, so today, at uh, this afternoon, there was news that came out. Sea Change is in talks to take Triller public via a merger. So there's some merger involved here. That's why we see this this pop on news. Um, so that's why you can always look at the news feature to see what's happening. This is for someone to get for someone to pay for the fly news by itself. I think is like 50 or 60 bucks a month. I haven't checked recently, but I knew it was. I mean, it's not cheap. And it's included in your black box subscription. So, you know, utilize this news tab. We get all the time asked in the chat and in, and in Discord, any news on this ticker? Why the big pop? Well, no need to ask. The, the news is right here at your fingertips. You can come over here, type in the ticker and, and see it right there uh, for yourself. Okay. And then if you see something of interest, then you could even post it to the rest of the room and said, hey, this popped, here's the news why, you know, uh, be helpful to everybody else if they're wondering the same question. But utilize the news tab as much as you can. It is filter specific. So because I have ticker specific, I should say, because I have this on SEAC, I'm seeing news only for SEAC. 
If we want to see all news, it gets back to this, click on all news, and now it continues feeds as the news comes in. On the filter tab, let's go over a few things on the filter. Let's go over ratings. So I click ratings, hit set filters. Now I'm going to see all of the upgrades, downgrades, uh, initiations, price target increases, decreases, things like that for all tickers. So in the mornings, I like to review that, see if anything got some nice upgrades or downgrades that could possibly move through the market today, that day. Let's talk about Edgar filings. So Edgar filings are a lot of the different forms. One that is used quite frequently is that 13F filing. It set filters. Now I see all 13F filings as they come through uh, live on different from different uh, brokers. So maybe there's another uh, form that you'd like to look for insider trading, you know, insider buying, insider selling, um, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of different forms out there. You can click on filter, make sure Edgar is checked, and then type in which form you want, and it'll show you on the black box site. And this is live, so you can see that as, as we were seeing, uh, this came in at 5:35 just a minute ago. Uh, this one by Hugh Grant. Okay. All right, so that is the news tab. Next, let's go over chat. Chat, there's a couple things. This is a new uh, interface for us. There's really a couple areas that you really only need to spend most of your time, okay? Let's talk about main chat. Click on main chat. This is a great place to be if you feel that Discord is a little too busy for you, um, a little too cluttered. Remember, there's over 6,000 members. They all have access to Discord, and it can get a little, little busy sometimes. But over here on main chat on the Blade Black Box website, there's only about two dozen people that hang out here throughout the day. It's kind of like the best kept secret, to be honest. Um, and we have moderators. Seven Star Mike hangs out here all day long to help. Um, I will hang out here from time to time. Charlie hangs out here from time to time. He's one of the co-founders of this of this platform. Um, on here, he's called BB2 on main chat. You'll see him post sometimes as BB2. Um, on Twitter, he's uh, Options Mafia. So Options Mafia, BB2, and Charlie are all the same person. Um, but we hang out here and help you. So if main chat on Discord is too busy, come hang out here. And to get there again, you just click on rooms, go to main chat, and then you get to the chat room. This little speaker, what that does is it turns on the live stream from the Discord voice channel. So if you if that speaker is lit up green and it says, <clears throat> you are now listening to main chat, that means you are listening. Oh, Pete, Pistol Pete's over there right now doing a teaching session as well. That's what you hear in the background. I'm gonna turn that off. Um, but you're getting a live stream from Kang, from T. Lamb, Maria, Melstone, Pete, some of the moderators getting live voice. So you can chat with us here. Again, this is a much smaller room. You'll get more attention here, to be honest, probably, because there's less, less people that are actually active. So come hang out here if you find Discord is just a little too confusing. All right. The other room that you can go to if you want to listen is Roadhouse. They don't, they're not too active in their uh, room itself, but their voice channel is very active. So you can click on that and listen to Hell's Bells and Bender over in the Roadhouse, and you can listen to them talk live through their trades. Team trades, this is where you're going to find all of the ones that we push out either in a as moderators, so team traders, you can tell Mel got into AMD, uh, Jenny got into Apple, that was all this morning. Um, then she got, then Mel got out of AMD um, out on that low of day break, so she took a loss on that one. Um, but this is where you'll find all of our entries and exits that we post live. Um, go back to flow plays. Flow plays are ones that. Charlie pushes out from the app. So these are the absolute best of the best flow for the day. None today. There wasn't anything out there that he felt was good enough to push out to everybody as something that he would recommend as following. So that happens from time to time. 
I have to respect that. If he's not willing to put his money out there, why would he push it out there to everybody else? So nothing today. This was this dates back to Friday when we got some Microsoft flow that came in. But this is a nice little collection of where all of those flow plays can be found. To get the app, you need to go to your Apple store or go to the Google store and just download the Black Box Stocks app. And then at the bottom of the app, you'll see where it says flow plays, team trades. Um, that's how you can get push notifications to your phone when those trades go out. So you have to go to notifications, make sure you have them turned on, but uh, then make sure you have the app downloaded. Jamie Swan, I am typically in, I, I kind of hang around in Discord, the Discord room, but I'm also in the main chat room right here with seven star mic. I love to hang out here more than I do Discord because it's it's slower paced. People come over here, they actually feel like they wanna learn, they're asking good questions, I'm willing to help uh, without getting a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, clutter that's found in Discord sometimes. Okay. Michelle, does the market scan show ETF like SPY or QQQ? No, it does not. Uh, the market scans don't show those. The options do, and I'll get to options here in a second, where you can see the options flow for the ETFs. Hamid, how do you turn alerts into trades? Again, remember the alert is is signaling you to look at it, right? The There are tens of thousands of tickers out there. How do you know which one to buy, right? So this system is going through their algorithm-based mathematic equations and coming up with, hey, this put this has some this something crazy is going on with this ticker. Either volumes coming in, prices moving up, a combination of both. Um, it's some proprietary formula that you know kicks off these alerts. The alerts don't mean buy, they just mean go look at this ticker and figure out what's going on. And then we talk through it. So on our live voice channels, either in Roadhouse or in main chat, as an alert pops up, we talk through it. Okay, this this is what happened, this, this alerted, um, pull up the chart, look at it, okay. Yeah, I can see why it alerted. It, they're trying to catch a falling knife. It's at some nice level of support. This might be a good low risk entry. You know, that's how you that's how you talk through it. You got to work through the alert. It does not mean automatically buy it. Hamid, uh, flow play, those, <clears throat> those are the plays that are the absolute best option flow for the day. So as those come through our system, they get pushed out to everybody. If you have the app, they will come in here as well. Um, but these are the absolute best, you know, so much of flow play, guys, is trash. 99.3% of it is trash. What we're looking for is that 0.7%. And if you work full time or you can't be in front of your screens all the time, all the time and watching for that 0.7%, then the answer to you is flow play. <clears throat> when those get pushed out by our moderators and by Charlie, that's the ones you want to pay attention to. Huge, huge, huge success rate on these flow plays. It is truly the best of the best option flow out there. And if you can't sit and watch and babysit, you know, a lot of people can't. I understand that. I can't either all the time. But if a flow play comes along while I'm out doing something else, I guarantee I'm taking that very seriously. Okay. Sam, how long do I hold a flow play? You know what? Each person holds differently. So if a whale gets into it and they stay in it, for a while, you know, you can see that they're still in it because the open interest is still there. Uh, you know, I may I may ride with them. If I go green and it's a 
crazy little market, I may take my 10, 20, 30% gains and move on to the next one. So there is no rule to how long I stay in. But typically they are swing plays, yes. All right, so that finishes these buttons here. We went over all of that. Go back to chat. There's a few more things I wanted to show you here, black box videos. This is going to be how-to videos. So I do a bunch of how-to videos for black box, and this is where you're gonna see how to use the black box stocks watch list. That's not my watch list. It's the watch list built into black box. Uh, how to do historical dark pool, which I showed you how to do. How to save chart settings. I showed you how to do that. How to trade through we call click click boom or trade stations. You can trade directly from black box if you had a trade station account. There's a video out there for that. So this black box videos room is nothing but how to videos. Okay. Homework. This is going to be just some different webinars, uh, YouTube videos that we have found have been very successful, very helpful to a lot of people. So you can come in here on your weekends or evenings and check out some of these videos and, and get through some of them. Um, all right, bulletin board, that is just those pop-up boxes that come up from time to time. This is just a history of where those are. So if you click on it, you're like, oh man, I don't know what I just clicked on. Come over here to bulletin board and you'll see what that message was. Okay, so before we switch over to the option side, let me go through here and see if there's any questions about the stock side that we need to answer. Is there an order of 25,000 for an option from a regular guy like us would be the previous dark pool showing it or will only big, big guys? Rati, I think I, I think I understand your question. Um, in order to see your like option flow, you mean? Yeah, we have members, uh, moderators. We have our trades pop up here on uh, the option flow all the time. I shouldn't say all the time, but we do see it from time to time uh, pull up here on the option flow. So no, this is not taking into consideration just the big players. It's it's everybody that fits the criteria. Uh, we don't show every line of flow because that would just drive you nuts. Um, you know, anything, you know, anything, I think it has to be over $10,000 in premium for it to even register. And there's a few other parameters, but. Uh, as far as options flow, no. If you make a big enough trade, yeah, we'll see it up here. Can I get market cap for top gainers and decliners? Uh, not on here, you can't, Giam. You'd have to go to your, you know, for that, you could go to Yahoo Finance, type it in. It'll show you the market cap on those guys. Uh, would you kind of review your daily setups? Uh, sure, Jobs. We'll get to that if we have time later today. Jamie asks the same question. Burhan. I heard that there are also option trade alerts sent to members in Discord chat. Can you talk about those, please? Burhan, I think I did. So if you get the app, um, or if you want to check them out here under flow plays or team trades, this is where you're going to see those trades being made. But you can also download that app. That app is key. All right. Let me pull this up real quick. Uh, da -da -da. There. You guys should see that slide now. So uh, App Store, Black Box Stocks Mobile, Google Play, Black Box Stocks, download it. And then down here, you'll see, this is screenshots of what it looks like. Um, these are the flow plays. Then you have the team trades, which are the ones that the moderators are getting in and out of. But then on the far right is notifications. You click on that and then you turn on which notifications you want pushed to your phone at you know as far as being notified on your phone like for me i have flow plays and team trades alerted i have the others turned off just so that if i because i don't want to get too many alerts because then i ignore it i definitely want to see these two so i leave those two on and turn all of these off but that's that's make sure you guys get the app downloaded and get those notifications turned on within the app okay 
Um, Jamie, how do you determine from flow which ticker has the most probability of great trade? There's so much flow to look through. Jamie, hopefully I answered that for you. But pay attention. Let's, for example, look at this dish. Okay, I just it just popped up here. Um, at the end of the day today, about 3:30, there was a 1.3 million dollar sweeper in dish for January of 2023. So that's a leap. It's over a year out. Um, am I going to follow that? Probably not, because I'm not. I lose patience and I get bored with trades. But if you, you know, that's uh, barely out of the money for dish. Uh, for being a year out, someone put a 1.3 million to work on it. Um, look through these flow plays that are shown over here and see, and then try to figure out, okay, why did those get pushed out compared to something else? Okay, that'll teach you what we're looking for. And the way I can, any of you that are interested in option trading and you want to learn how to use this options flow, the next class you must take. All right, not, I'm not saying you should, I'm saying it's a must, is Seven Star Mike's class on Thursday nights. So go to education, go to class calendar. Every Thursday, he does a class called Understanding Options Flow. Every day, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Take that class. He will answer all of your questions on options flow and what we look for, and more importantly, what we ignore. That's the key, what to ignore more than what to follow. Good question, Jamie. Ray, how do you get the time column to show time, please? I only have the date. Not sure what we were talking about when you said that. So if you could give me a little more information, I can go back and look for that for you. Stocks alert stream. Time right there. Oh, down here at the bottom. The time column right here. Okay. So, what's your question? How do you get the time column to show time? Um, I don't know. Mine are showing time. I, don't, I didn't realize there was an option. Got it? All right. He's good. <laughs> All right. Good. I'm glad you figured it out, Ray. Uh, Andy, uh, you're trying to figure out where to put the questions. It's in... Uh, yeah. I don't my if I show you my go to webinar it's it looks different than you guys but there should be some place on the go to webinar uh where you're you should see something that looks like this uh if you go to questions or chat I think it's questions you can type in a box something like that um It's been a while since I was on your end of the webinar, but it's somewhere built into the GoToWebinar interface where you can type questions in. Obviously, you know where to type them because you just typed in this question on where are the questions. <laughs> I see them, you don't, if that's what you're asking. I see the questions, you don't. Yeah. Yeah, good deal. All right, let me go back up here. Um, is there a reason why the links on my black box page aren't working? Example, say I'm looking at Tesla flow and I just wanna look at all the flow. The all options tab won't do anything, okay? So if I go to Tesla, now I'm looking at just Tesla. If I click all options, it takes me back to all options. Um, it's working for me. Tesla, all options. So I'm not sure what the question was there, but that 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 is working for me at this point. When I'm in main chat and listening to the radio, it always stops after 10 to 15 minutes. I know that's a known issue uh, now, now, man. Um, 
I heard some users are having success using Microsoft Edge as their browser and not using Chrome or Firefox. So you may try a different browser if you're having some issues. Um, but I would report that to support at blackboxstocks.com too and just make sure that they're aware of the issue. Can the chart window be resized? It can be resized to the, either this one, as you click on this expansion button, then it gets to be the bigger size. And you click it again to take it back. Okay. Are there different types of traders? What is a pattern day trader? What is the requirement for being a day trader? What are differences between a stock or options day trader? Uh, that is a lot of questions. Um, yes, there's different types of day traders. A pattern day trader is someone that the government basically says, or your brokerage says, um, doesn't have enough funds in their account to day trade. And they use the $25,000 mark as kind of the, the base of that. However, that was initially set up for stock traders, people who bought shares. And shares of stock take two days to clear. So if I buy and if I sell something today, I can't use that money again until Wednesday because it has to clear. Options, however, because they don't trade post market, um, they don't trade pre market, options settle overnight. So I let's say I have a $10,000 account. And let's say it's I don't use margin. I that's the that's the key right there. If you don't want if you want to day trade every day, your entire account balance, make sure you're set up as a cash account. Use a cash account, doing options. I can trade ten thousand dollars in options today, and at the end of the day, I'm all cash. It shows it as it shows it as unsettled, and tomorrow morning it's all settled, and I can do the same ten thousand again tomorrow. And then at the end of the day, it shows it unsettled. Wednesday morning, settled. I can do it all again Wednesday. You'll never get hit with pattern day trader, PDT, if you are in a cash account. So I recommend doing that. You're very welcome. Uh, can I have multiple charts at once? Or do I have to open another window for BBS? Yes, Jiam, good question. At this time, that is an upgrade that is coming, but at this time, you only have one chart at a time. But you can have up to five tabs of black box opened at one time on your browser. So you can have different boxes pulled up through different tabs. But currently, yeah, you can only look at one chart at a time. This arrow is something you guys don't have uh, because see it says push a flow play. So only certain people have the ability to obviously do that and that pushes that out to the app and to everybody. So that's why you see it on my screen and it's not on your screen, this arrow. Yeah, that's it for administrators only. Yep, good question. Well, you're really paying attention if you're seeing, notice that and you don't have it, good job. Okay, are we good? Can we flip over to options now? Any questions I didn't answer? We're we're at an hour at this point, so we can uh, let's go. Okay, doesn't look like there's any additional questions, so let's flip over to options, which we are already there. Let's talk about the options. We're going to talk about the options filter. And if you also noticed when this changed, when we went from stock, this box over here also changes from gainers, decliners to active calls, active puts, bullish flow, bearish flow. First thing I'm gonna tell you, ignore these first two. Ignore these first two. Ignore most active calls, ignore most active puts. Reason being is this is just talking about active. Most active calls does not take into consideration a bearish call and most active puts does not take into consideration a bullish put well, what's a bullish put what's a bearish call great question 
So how do you decipher the difference? When you're looking at option flow, it can be a little confusing at times. But remember, it all revolves around the ask or the bid. So if I'm opening a call, if I'm buying a call to open, and I'm paying the ask because I'm long that call, right? I want that ticker to go up. That is bullish. When I close that, I'm selling it, I'm sell the close on the bid. That tells me that at that point, that's a bearish play because I'm getting out of that position thinking, okay, the run is done. I'm no longer thinking it's going up. So that would be considered bearish. So calls on the bid are bearish, calls on the ask are bullish. Same thing with puts, okay? Puts on the ask means that they are opening that position and thinking it's going to be going down. So in that case, that would be a bearish put. When you close that put out, you get filled on the bid, which means now you think the, the downside is getting close to being done. So that would be called bullish. So that would be puts on the bid are bullish, puts on the ask are bearish. Remember, puts in general, we think as downside calls we think as going upside so because of that that's why there can be ones both directions okay a lot more to that but that's just a brief overview of what those are these two columns do not take that in consideration these two do so bullish flow takes into consideration uh bullish flow can also be what we just went over it a call on the ask or above ask or a put on the bid or below bid both of those would be considered bullish bearish flow would be a call on the bid or below bid and a put on the ask or above ask okay so pay attention to these two columns ignore these two now let's talk about flow and the filter tab so you click on the filter tab and you get all of these amazing filters. Everybody's like, I don't know what to do. There's just so many of them. But when you first come in, this is what it looks like, all right? So we're gonna go through this relatively quickly. You're gonna see all the puts, you're gonna see all the calls, you're gonna see the yellow, the whites, the magenta. You can see that on the flow, there's different colors, right? There's yellow, there's white, there's magenta. Uh, that is unchecked default leave it unchecked if you're new to options flow do not watch multi-leg it will just confuse you to death and you could make some bad decisions based on it so just uncheck it once you get a little more experience and you start looking at it then that's that's a different story but right now just make sure that's unchecked above ask and add or above ask is checked by default that tells you that those are opening positions Okay, they're coming into it, they're buying at the ask, so that means they're opening, they're not closing them. If they're closing them, they'd be at the bid or below bid. So this is opening positions. Then you can filter by contract size. So if you want to only see contracts that are 50 cents or less, click here. If you want to see contracts that are only $5 or less, check that box. If you want to see this value, the premium being only over 100,000, greater than 100,000, greater than 200, greater than half a million, check those boxes and it'll filter out a lot of the smaller flow. If you wanna see everything uh, less than 7.75 trillion market cap, you can check that. If you check that, you're not gonna see Google, you're not gonna see Apple, you're not gonna see Microsoft, you're not gonna see Tesla. Um, so it filters out some of those big dogs where they have so much flow that it just kinda like gets mind numbing. But you can filter those guys out. If you only want to see sweeps, there's two options, sweeps and blocks. See, these are all sweeps showing here. If there was a block, you'd see it would say block. To know the difference, think of a sweep as a market order and think of a block as a limit order. Somebody came in, negotiated that block. So it kind of takes away the urgency, right? They're like, yeah, I want in, but only at this price. Or I want in and I'm only willing, willing to pay at this exchange. So we like to follow sweeps, not blocks. Um, you can filter by contract size. So how many contracts are in the uh, transaction? Only want to see big ones? Greater than 5,000. Click it. 
if you only want to see weekly, so this is only going to show you contracts that expired this week. Okay. Um, sectors, gonna, you can, there's only certain sectors you want to watch. You can uncheck the ones you don't want to watch. And security. So right now we're just seeing stocks only. If I also want to see the queues and the spy, make sure you click ETF. Uh, now that I hit filter, now you see queues come in, spy comes in, IWM comes in. We had somebody tell me the other day, black box stocks option flow is, doesn't show ETFs. Yes, we do. They just forgot to turn it on. So you have the option to turn it on or turn it off. Okay. So again, the way I set mine up is I have those four to five tabs open up on my browser. And I will have one set to this way. So I only uncheck puts. All right. Then I'll go to my other browser and I'll leave puts off. And I only I check that guy right there to see, okay, if I just want to quickly check on big flow, um, I'll do that on one tab. On another tab, I'll do that and hit ETF. I'll back this off to like 100. So now I'm only seeing ETF flow that's over 100,000 in value. So you you know you can utilize the filter however you want in different tabs. And then instead of having to go in and change your filter all the time, you just tab across your screen and see different flow that's come in. Okay. So that is how you use the filter. Now, what do these colors mean? White, yellow, magenta. It all revolves around open interest, okay? So to figure out this, remember how we went up to education earlier and I had you guys download the stock guide? Now I want you to go to education and download the options guide. It tells you what each alert means, okay? So down here we have a bunch of buttons that we're gonna go over. One of them is the alerts. You can see there's ones called roulette, bullish repeater bearish steady bullish um, different names for different alerts this tells you what those mean okay the next page talks about the heat map which i'll go over open interest which i'll go over if you keep scrolling down eventually you get to flow tab and you see these colors right here White, yellow, purple. White tells us that open interest has not been exceeded. Yellow tells us open interest was exceeded in a single trade. Purple, open interest was exceeded but in multiple trades. Okay, so we'll go back to the flow. <clears throat> Let me get something, let's filter out some of this nonsense. All right, AMD. February 145s. Someone bought 187 contracts. It's white. That tells me that if I go to my broker and go to the option chain and look at the open interest for AMD for that strike, that expiration, there is more than 187 currently open in that position. So white tells me it did not exceed it. It's under that, okay? Purple, Apple 175s for this week. See how they started white? So there's a lot of open interest in there. How much open interest is in there? I don't know, I didn't go look, but eventually enough of them got hit that it exceeded it at this point and turned purple. So those were opening, right? These are opening trades above ask above ask those are somebody buying into those this this week's 175s uh right at market close somebody was trying to get sneaky and they're like i'm going to put 600 700 thousand dollars to work here on apple see what happens overnight and the thing dropped six dollars from high to low today so they're taking a gamble on that one but that tells us that this contract eventually enough had been bought that it exceeded open interest now, if I see something in yellow, this 100 
contract purchase of MasterCard's January 335s, if I go to look at my option chain, tells me that there's less than 100 in there because this 100 exceeded it in one single transaction. So the one single sweep, they came in, exceeded open interest. We know they're opening that position again because they bought on the ask. It's not on the bid. And they are getting into these at a uh, couple, about a month out, 335s in the money. Because see, it's currently at 346. They bought the 335s. Um, so that's what the yellow means. So what we look for is those, the big ones. If you notice, if you flip through here through the flow plays, what do you notice? A lot of yellows, purples with yellow, whites with purple and yellow, white, purple, yellow. That's what we're looking for, okay? You're not gonna see a ton of the alerts go out that are just nothing but whites. We wanna see that open interest being exceeded, which again shows time, urgency, and size. Do you need to re-log in every day or can you just keep your five tabs open at the top of the browser? You can leave them open, Michelle. The only difference is if we push out a update, your system sometimes won't work very well. Um, it'll kind of be clunky, but yeah, uh, you can leave them open. Yep, you sure can. Just know that if you have some issues, you may need to go in and uh, just restart them. We may have pushed out a little update to fix some of the bugs, things like that. GM, how do I get the call or put options that are being closed, which were previously yellow or purple open trades? Uh, you need to go to your filter and uncheck these two boxes. So you wanna see, a lot of people think that they should check all four of these, because if you wanna see things that are being closed, you would want to see the bid or below bid but actually by doing this you're missing the middle so for example uh on these let me uh do this do this do the 180s or 190s okay <clears throat> you see how these are now ask bid below bid I have everything checked, right? I got all four of these checked. But if I uncheck them, watch this list grow, okay? Uh, right there, grew by one. So right there, there was one that filled in the middle, in between. So a lot of times people say, I don't, I don't see that flow you guys are talking about. That's because they have all of these checked and they didn't realize that by doing that, they're actually limiting the flow somewhat. So if you want to see absolutely all of the flow that comes in, make sure you don't have any of these checked. Now I can see this one filled on below bid, which would be which would signal a closing position. So that's how you look. You look for the Bs and the BBs. All right. Good deal. All right, any other questions? I'm gonna, awesome, glad that helped. We've got uh, a few minutes. If there's a certain ticker you want to go over, I can. Guys, all of the questions about the SWAN watch list, um, I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna go through that right now just because we have a lot of people on here that maybe could care less about the SWAN watch list. Um, in time, I will put out a video on how I come up with those lines. Um, I've just been so busy right now. I haven't had time to actually sit down and, and think about it and go through with it. But they're not rocket science, guys. It's support resistance lines from EMAs that I see over a one to two hour chart. Okay. Um, which ticker I pick? I have a set of tickers that are in my sandbox. I just scroll through them. But mainly, it's me flipping through charts at night. I go through dozens and dozens and dozens of charts, flip, 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 flip. And I have my time frame set on hourly or two hour or four hour. And just by flipping through charts, I can quickly see uh, tickers that are compressed or in a zone that look like they are going, getting ready to make a little move. Okay. 
And then if I see that there is some support close by and some resistance close by, that's even better because then I can draw some lines in and that's where I get my lines from. So that's the cliff notes, but that's what we're looking at, okay? Look at an hourly chart, look for compression, look for a support line near and a resistance line near, and then use those. Okay, let's see what we got here. Got some op some some questions on flow. <clears throat> I missed a little. What's the best way to use this info? I shouldn't just look at high interest call put and just enter. And does this dark pool and does this dark pool info? So dark pool, yeah, we look at dark pool as levels of support and resistance. Just remember that um, none of this means buy or sell. It's all what we're looking here is what we're looking at is money flow and in order to get a full picture you have to take little pieces of the puzzle everywhere to kind of see what's happening and then it gives you a complete picture so you take a little bit of flow you take dark pool you're like okay i see this is happening i see that's happening that's of interest to me um, i like the chart at this point so i mean yeah it's all it's all very relative and then you take that decision, you make an educated yes. The best, the best place to enter, we all teach this every day, try to get options traders to understand we make our money on the entry, not the exit. Everybody's like, what do you mean on that? In options, entry is everything, right? You buy on support if you're going long and you sell when you come up to resistance. If you're going short, you buy at resistance and that's because it minimizes risk. So, you know, people always ask, where do I buy? If I see option flow, well, how do I know when to buy? Listen, if it's millions of dollars of flow going into a ticker that doesn't get much flow and it's near the money and it has six to eight weeks on it, I'm not even maybe even looking at a chart. I'm going in and just buying one or two contracts because that person that put in millions has a whole team of people doing technical analysis and they know a whole lot more than I do. I don't know, if they're willing to put in millions, I'm willing to put in a couple hundred. All right, we're gonna limit this because questions are coming in pretty heavily and I don't wanna take everybody's time up too late. All right, DPZ, Vishal, I need more information than just the ticker. What, I see no flow for DPC today. Um, so give me a little more information on what you want me to look at DPZ. Moving on, we'll go to another one. Uh, did Apple fail support at the dark pool level? You know, that dark pool level was big on Apple. It came in right at close, I think. Uh, what's going on here? Here we go. Where did that, when did that option flow come in? That 175. Yeah, it came in right at close. So, no, you know, it came down to it. We'll see what it does tomorrow. Um, Yeah, I mean, the run that Apple had, it needed a healthy pullback. I mean, it really did. But there's a lot of dark pool levels, support levels below it still. So it's not like it's completely washed out. Everything kind of gave back there at the end today. You know, the queues dropped, Microsoft dropped. Uh, everything kind of had a little bit of a sell-off there for low of day. So Apple just followed suit. Sure, can I look at cost? Sure, what do you want me to look at cost? Oh, there you go, you got it. Uh, cost chart shows stuck in a narrow band while others peers sold off late. Is that bullish? Yeah, I I take that as bullish. Then look, a dark pool level came in today at five after hours at 557.22. Someone asked me that today. The whole market was going down uh, for the first half of the day, right? I mean, look at the Q chart. Let's look at SPY. I mean, look at the SPY chart all the way till about noon, right? It finally hit a bottom, but then look at cost. At 10.30, that thing reversed and went for high a day. <laughs> yeah, that's a bullish move. And then it consolidated. 
um, right in here with a dark pool level that came in, look at the five day on cost. Nice move yesterday, dipped, came back up to basically test yesterday's highs. Let's go to a 15 minute. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's a beautiful chart for bullish. Uh, looks like ATH is its next test. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Definitely took uh, cost as bullish today. Someone asked me, hey, you, you know, it was on your watch list and, you know, would you consider going short if it breaks that line down? I'm like, no way. Uh, not the way it's held up today in that market. I'm like, no, I'm not going short on that thing. The short play was this morning. But once it hit 147.50, that thing just went doing. So, all right. <clears throat> uh, Chandra, do, do alerts or recommendation for selling options? No, but they do that in the roadhouse. So if you're interested in doing that, go to the chat section. Um, rooms and listen to the guys in the roadhouse they do some of those complex selling of options selling premium things like that check those guys out uh we did not have a flow play today sam uh, we did not have a flow play get pushed out today i heard the market retest dark pool prints if those dark pool levels are not trading cash market what's your opinion uh i don't know Giam. i don't have an opinion on that really I don't know. Uh, Prochiska, I can't tonight. I've got something else I need to get to, but um, there's tons of different videos out there on FIB levels on how to use them. Um, basically, you're, they're just extensions of support and resistance. Um, I'm by no means a master at fib levels at all. Pistol Pete's really good. Uh, right timing is everything. Last question, where would you personally rank black box versus trade ideas and check out NASDAQ? Where would you personally rank black box versus trade ideas? Trade idea, I, I'm not sure what you mean there, but um, I, black box to me is the ultimate tool. It gives me everything I need to use for trading. It gives me the flow, it gives me the, the education, it gives me the, the community, um, it gives me the dark pool, it gives me all of the flow, so many flow other options, services out there, I'm not gonna name names, they don't show you all the flow, they don't have anybody reading the flow, which means it comes, they'll show something as a bearish play when actually it's bullish because they don't know what the, it's just a computer telling them, not a person that actually has to read it. So yeah, black box by far exceeds all option services out there, in my opinion. Is there a member watch list section also where members can bounce ideas? Yeah, on Discord, uh, Block Wall Street in our Discord room, so in, if you go to chat here, right here, this last post uh, is the link to the Discord room. So go to main chat, click on that if you're not in the Discord room. And uh, when you get in, you'll have to uh, DM Jenny. It gives you instructions. If you go, you, when you first get in there, you're, you're put into the waiting room. Click on those instructions, DM her your email. She confirms that you're a member and then you get access. And then once you get in, there's a room called the basement. And the basement is a good place where you can bounce ideas off each other. Yep. Or even in the in the trades room. Absolutely. Even in the main trade room. No worries. Thank you for joining. Uh, can you please explain how to add the dark pool band again? Yeah. No worries, Andrea. Um, it's under studies. 
So come up here to study. And it's the very first one, dark pool volume profile. You click that and then you'll get the orange bar um, on your chart. If you don't see it, you're zoomed in too close, just zoom out and then it will populate with that bar. Good deal. Richard, hopefully that answers your question too. On those orange bars, those are the dark pool levels. All right, Vishale, I forgot which ticker that was about. Was that the 480 calls? Was that uh, DPZ? <clears throat> yeah, okay. So you're saying the March 18, 2022, 480s. Uh, they closed about 1,000 of 4,500 contracts in the last two days, so I wanted to check if those got highlighted in the options flow today. <laughs> oh, I'm not seeing any DPZ flow today. Let me look if it was maybe Friday. So on Friday, yeah, on Friday, uh, about I can see about 600, oh, there it is, yeah, the 480s, yeah, 500 of them came in on the block, on the bid right there at $68. So they took they took their 100% on that one because I think they got in around 36 something, uh, if I remember that flow correctly, 36, 37. So they took 500 off at 60 at 68 right there on the bid. Oh, 24, okay. So yeah, it shows it. And so see how it comes in on the white? It comes in on the bid. It's how they it's how we can see that they're closing out, closing out of those. <clears throat> Petruska, we don't Pet Petrescu, I mean, no, I'm saying your, your name wrong. Petrescu, um, Petrescu, Monica. Uh, we don't know if it's a buy or sell in dark pool. We just have to look at the price and see how it reacts, how the price reacts around those lines. Uh, that's why some. That's why people buy in the dark pool or sell in the dark pool because they do not have to tell their intent. So we just use it as a line, draw the line in, and then over the next day or so, you can tell whether it was a buy or sell just based off of price action, right? How the price reacts around it. If it continues to bounce on it, then obviously that's support. It was a buy. But if it if it uh, fails and bounce and fails and rejects and hits its head up against it and rejects again, then more likely that was a sell. So we don't know for sure, but we just have to you know watch it as a point of interest and use it as such. Uh, Black Wall Street, yes, we have tons of education. So yes, we've got it in, in Discord, but your best tool for education is going to be on the Black Box website, going to education and class calendar, signing up for all of these classes that show up here, um, or going over here to the main chat, chat section, rooms, and then clicking on either homework or Black Box videos and watching those recordings. Okay, if there's something particular you're looking for, feel free to send me a DM or an email. Yep, welcome, glad to have you. Monica, thank you. I will call you Monica. <laughs> Michelle, they close 500 today, but in blocks of 50 each. Yeah, if they close them in blocks of 50 each, our system, we're not gonna, if we showed you every block trade of 50, Oh my goodness, option flow would just be so clogged. Yeah. So, yeah, if they, uh, that's why we watch open interest. You're doing it right. Watch that open interest. You can tell when they get out.
Uh, Terry, they could be. Are they stock buyback purchases? Some of the dark pool can be. Yes, it can be. Uh, so for Apple today, the black the dark pool level was a sell. Looks like the price bounced off the dark pool bar. We don't know if it was a buy or a sell. We don't know, Richard. Which dark pool are you talking about on Apple? There were several that came today. Do you have one in mind? I mean, that big one that came in at the end of the day, <clears throat> I mean, there were small ones through here throughout the day. Um, price couldn't hold above them, right? So we, we got one that dropped, we got some more that dropped, we got some more that dropped, and then this big one came in right towards the end of the day, so we don't know about this one. Tomorrow, do me yourself a favor and on your chart, draw that dark pool line, okay? Um, it's 175.74. Draw that on your chart, and then tomorrow we'll see how price reacts around it. Yep. Good. Terry, uh, does BBS have a filter for stock buybacks? Um, you know, I'm not too familiar with that type of stuff, to be honest. I don't want to give you bad information, but if it's a, a form that's that's put out, you can filter those out by the uh, News tab. You click on News and go to Filters. Um, if there is a form that's used, you can filter Edgar filings by clicking Edgar and click the click the filing and see if it pulls up that way. But as far as news goes and just, you know, filtering out stock buybacks by themselves, I think the only way would be to filter it that direction. You're welcome. Okay, guys, that's everything. We've been on for an hour and a half. I greatly appreciate your time, uh, taking out of your afternoon and evening. Hey, go enjoy some time with your families and friends. Uh, get get a night, good night's rest. Come back tomorrow ready to learn, and we will uh, continue to push forward with Black Box. If you are interested in Black Box stocks and you have not, you're not a member. Email me. Uh, my email is swan s w a n at blackboxstocks.com. I'll get you a discount link and we'd be happy to have you with the family if you liked what you saw with this platform tonight. Remember, not only just the platform, you get the community, you get the education, all of it included uh, with your subscription. So we'd love to have you um, as we continue to grow. Uh, thanks for your time again. Uh, let me see here, one more question came in. Clarification, one can day trade options multiple times in a day without any penalty and limit as long as it's being from a cash account, no 25K limit. Correct, Hamid. So, the let's say you have ten thousand dollars in capital in your account and it's a cash account and you're trading only options you can day trade that ten thousand dollars one time throughout the day so you can buy one ten thousand dollar contract and sell it and be done for the day or you can buy you know a hundred dollar contract a hundred times and sell it and tomorrow you get to do it all over again so if you close your if you if you open and close all those positions and your cash again at the end of the night, you get to do the entire account the next day. You don't have to wait two days. That's with options. Commons, stock commons, stock actual stocks, you have to wait two days. All right. Hopefully that answered your question. Again, thank you all. Um, I do not do this the stock and options class, Sam. I've never looked at it. Hopefully this wasn't too jumbled for you guys. I appreciate your patience as we went through it. Um, Sam, maybe I'll look at it someday, but you know, I got we gotta give Teresa some work to do, right? <laughs> um, all right, man. Every day you guys have a great night. You can do it more than once a day. Uh, Hamid.
No, you 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 can only do your 10,000 for the day. Once you've used up all that buying power for the day, you're done. But the good news is that then the next day you can do it all over again and you don't get hit with pattern day trader. Okay. Swan, S-W-A-N. Yep, just like the bird, Block Wall Street. You got it. Good, Jim. Thank you for joining us, John. Thank you. Swan at blackboxstocks.com. Here, let me... Uh... Got it? Okay. Yep. Swan at blackboxstocks.com. All right, everybody. Have a good night. We will talk to you later. Uh, Rob, are the webinars recorded for us to watch later? This one is recorded. Yes. I will post it in the... I will post it in the homework channel later tonight or first thing tomorrow once it updates. If I forget, send me a direct message and I'll get you the link. Hmm. All right. Good night.